Welcome to the Volume by Displacement tutorial. Displacement means to move something out of the way. If you displace something, you move it from one place to another. And so Volume by Displacement is figuring out how much space something takes up by how much water is displaced when you put it in water. So if you think about it this way, if you were to step into a pool of water, the water level would rise a little bit because you stepped into the water. Now, a common misconception is that that happens because of your weight. That's not the case. The water actually is just moving out of the way of the space that you're occupying because the water and you can't be in the same place at the same time. So it has nothing to do with your weight. It just has to do with the fact that you take up space and you're going to push that water out of that space. And it usually has nowhere else to go but up. So in the example below, if you take a graduated cylinder and you place some water in it and then you add an object to it, the water level will go up and the amount that the water level rises is going to be exactly equal to the amount of space taken up by the object. This is very convenient. So what we can do is we can measure where the water level is initially. Remember when you're using a graduated cylinder you have to read it at eye level and you have to read from the bottom of the meniscus. In other words where that curved U is at the bottom there. Read it carefully and make sure you read between the lines and measure out as far as you can. I have lots of different graduated cylinders in the classroom, so you have to be careful. Make sure you understand what each line represents. If you're not sure, call me over. I'll help you figure it out. Sometimes it's tricky. And after you figure out what each line represents, you have to figure out if you're going to estimate between lines what decimal place are you in, because it's really important that you measure out as far as you possibly can. Most students make the mistake of just rounding the decimal place off to a zero and not really thinking about how far they are between the lines. Don't do that. After you record this, this is called your initial water level, you're going to put your object in. Be careful, you don't want to splash. If you drop the object in and water splashes up here, that's going to mess up your volume measurement. So a good way to do this is to just sort of tilt your graduated cylinder so that it's on an angle like this and then slide your object in at a slant until it gently crashes into the water. Then you can put it back upright. Then you're going to get the new water level, which is the final water level, reading from the bottom of the meniscus. And all you need to do is subtract the final level minus the initial level. When students first use, start using this method, the first mistake they make is they don't measure their initial water level. They go, they get some water, they put their object in, and then they go, oh, Oops, forgot to measure the water before I added my object. Because what you want is the difference between the two. And that'll give you your volume. Remember that when you get that volume, um, you need to have the right number of sig figs. So assuming that you use the same graduated cylinder, then you should have as many decimal places in your answer as you had in your original measurements. Volume by displacement is also useful not only for a solid object, but for a powder, because believe it or not, powders are um, actually contain a lot of air. If you think about it, a powder is just pieces that are laying against each other. They're microscopically small in most cases, but look at these pieces that I'm drawing here. If this is a blown up picture of some powder, notice how the pieces actually have air spaces between them. They might be really tiny, but they can add up to a lot. Sometimes as much as 60% of the space a powder appears to take up is really just those air spaces. So if you really want to know the volume of a powder, because you're trying to find the density of a powder, if you want that, then what you need to do is put that powder in a liquid it doesn't dissolve in. This can be tricky. For example, a lot of you wanted to find the volume of the baking soda powder so that you could find the density of your baking soda versus the density of your heated baking soda. But when you do that, you can't just put the baking soda in water because it will dissolve. And if something dissolves, then you can't do the displacement method. So you would have had to have found a liquid that baking soda doesn't dissolve in. Um, very often things that dissolve in water do not dissolve in alcohol, so sometimes that's a good choice. In the lab that you're going to do, um, First, the first time you're going to do volume by displacement, you're going to be putting a metal in your water, and so it's not going to dissolve, so you don't have to worry about that. The only other thing you have to worry about, though, is if the object you're trying to put into the water floats, this doesn't work because some of it won't sink below the surface of the water. If that happens, you have to think of some creative way to make it sink, 
without actually adding anything to the water because that would also add to your volume. One thing you can do is if you have a, an object that doesn't sink is you can take a pencil and just use the point to temporarily hold it under water and that doesn't add too much to the volume measurement because just the point of your pencil doesn't take up very much space and if you're careful and good at it you can actually get it to hang out where you want it without the point even being under the level of the water. Okay, so that's volume by displacement. See you in the next tutorial.